one time I had like a you know like a four four bulldog you know like them handguns like a very high powered gun and uh, my mom found it this is still the same year right and um she said to me I said to her Rah. now I got to confront her. I said Rah, mom um you found something in my room yeah she's waiting for me to confront her and ask her because it was expensive man and she says yes um I said bro um can I have it back you know the c- common thing that people say is it's not mine I'm holding it for someone yeah. just so you don't look like a monster in front of your mom <laughs> it's not mine I have to give it back my mom said well it's either I'll get rid of it or you get out of the house and I said bro if you give it to me I get out of the house she says yeah I said cool you have to give it to me she gave it to me and that's left the house yeah I left the house <laughs> Bismillah, welcome to another episode of The Bridge. Today, we've got Mr. Enchman, yeah. Mr. Ghost Genetics. He's here to tell us about his life, his past, and what he's doing today. So, Jazakumullah khair for coming, bro. I appreciate you coming. I don't know if the sofa is big enough for you. Yeah, I'm just but, trying it. But, but, but we'll, we'll start. So, what's your name, Mahi? Tell us. Uh, my actual name, my name's Adam. Cool. Um, that's your birth yeah, name. That's my birth name, Adam. But I've, you know, I've, I'm known from where I'm from as Ghost. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Where, what, where are you from then? I'm from Newham. Originally, Newham, yeah. Newham, originally. Born here, raised everything. Yeah, uh, no, I was actually born in Uganda. So okay. I came here when I was a youth. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Refugee like me, or yeah, 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 yeah. All of that. Cool, cool. What's your history in in, in Uganda then? Uh, no, do you know what? Was you born there? Yeah, I was born there, and um, I was there till the age of seven. Okay, Six similar or seven, to me, okay. I come here when I was eight, so yeah, similar, okay. Yeah. And how come you left there to come here? Uh, my pops was here, mm. yeah, my pops was here, and um, uh, I think my pops kind of really, like, you know, kind of favoured me, you know, and he brought me there. So you had more kids there? Yeah, he had more kids, but I think it's where me and my pops, you know, one thing that I've learned is that, you know, when you're poor, right, growing up poor, um, and you go through things with um, your kid, with you. You struggle together, you go through things together, you go hungry together and mm. stuff like that. You, mm. you build like a unique, solid bond mm. as of the kids that are born with everything. Do you know what I'm saying? Course, and you also course. appreciate that builds memory. So when my pups came here, you know, he was like, you know, i got to get my little man here. So, mm. yeah, I came here. How was life back in Uganda, or do, I, from what you remember? Do you know what? My mum was well off. Uh, my mum was well off, um, but my dad, he was struggling here and there. And... I'll be, you know, in between. Be in between both. Did they separate from a young age then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They separated okay. from a young age. Okay, yeah. okay. So you're in between the both houses. Yeah, yeah, in between. Okay. How was life there though? Do you do you remember life living over there? Um, life as a kid, you know, um, as a kid, you just take it as it goes, you know. Um, my dad wasn't well off, but my mum was. You know, she owned properties and stuff like that. Um, that's due to um the guy that she had married before that she was with. Okay. He was like a pretty high, like army um ranked guy. So when he died, he had passed off everything and put it in her name mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So she um she had all the property left in her name. So like your dad was kind of not well off, but your mum was well yeah. off. Did that mean like you was well off or non well off? Uh to be honest, it benefited me neither, like, you know, because um if my mum was well off, I never felt like Obviously, you know, at the end of the day, in Africa, it's all about providing food and mm-hmm. shelter for your kids. The basics. Yeah, the basics, as long as your kids are good. And especially if they're going to school and stuff like that, that's all that matters. So if they've got shelter, they've got food and they've got school, everything else doesn't really matter. Like, and you had all of that? Yeah, yeah, I had, I had that. Were you from the capital of Kampala? Yeah, 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 Kampala. Yeah, Kampala. Okay. Your mum's got some Yeah, history. he knows his, yeah, he definitely. He knows his stuff, man. Definitely. He's an African, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. <laughs> uh, but cool, moving on. So seven years old, you've come to this country. Right. What's happening? Uh, I've come to this country. Um, uh, my dad's my dad got with uh, uh, my stepmom. Okay. Um, and um, was she Ugandan as well? Yeah, she was Ugandan. Okay. Uh, she was Muslim actually. Oh, my sure. Yeah, she was Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Um, you know, but um, so yeah, we uh, lived there with them. Um, this is in Newham. Yeah, this is in Newham. Okay. I um, went to primary school in Newham as well. Um, so I'm guessing you wasn't speaking English, or was you? No, nah, no, nah, you can't speak, speak English. English. Yeah, they speak, yeah? they speak the Queen's English. Okay, yeah, you know, you know uh, Nigeria stuff. Yeah, 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 that Uganda, type of English. Kenya, Tanzania, one of the British, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. English is so kind English, of like, it's like yeah. a first language. Yeah, yeah, but Somali was similar, but mm. our language is still our language. And then secondary, they do teach a bit of that. Mm. 
Mm. I think different. The reason being because you know they've got so many languages. And you mean the other countries, the tribal languages in Kenya, yeah, for yeah, example. Yeah, 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 mm. right. So English became like the the government language. Okay. Yeah. So official language became English. Mm. Yeah. Because there was the different languages, different whereas language. in Somalia it's just one language. Yeah. I mean, Swahili became look you could say a second, especially in East Africa. Yeah, but English was still kind of like the official kind of. Okay, so when you got yeah, you was already speaking English. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you yeah. you didn't feel like any indifference with the other kids in school? No, nah, not really. But um, the English that I that I used to communicate with, like you know, the words that you use, they don't use them here. Okay, you know, like it's it's slang over here. So whereas. In good evening, weekend. sir. Good evening. Yeah, good I you not, sir. You know, <laughs> should one point to that similitude, sir? Kids are looking at you like what, and you're looking at them like what the hell, you know? So um, <laughs> but um, yeah, no. Nah, um, so I, I, so you, in essence, yeah. you could argue there was more learned, really, because yeah, the more yeah, Africa, the more articulate you are, the more learned you are, in essence. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Like you see in Africa, people underestimate people in Africa, and even people back in Asia, mm. they study. You know that like the if you used to compare a kid like a, a seven year old in Asia or Africa mm. compared to the seven year old in here, yeah, yeah, yeah. The kids back in Africa or Asia have matured early. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? You get given responsibilities very early. Yeah. So you mature early. Look at Adam. Same thing in Jamaica. Jamaican schools yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. The level of English, right, right. articulation, yeah, of course, knowledge, because they actually study and yeah. study hard, and yeah. it's all here. Yeah. It's not just like you know what you're kind of like uh, just uh, computerized stuff. Right, right. They actually memorize the times tables, know it, and so on. So it's similar there as a Caribbean I, I, as well. Yeah, I think that's due to you know, especially if your parents pay school fees and stuff like that. They don't pay that here. Mm. The government funds funds it here. So free, whether yeah. you learn or you don't, you know. It's, but if your mum's grinding to pay. For your fees course, at school, of course. you know, and you see the school as a way out. Exactly. Here, you don't see school as a way out. It's just and also it's remember, a you don't pass. You don't go to the next until you yeah. pass. As well. <laughs> yeah, they hold you, you have back that in Uganda. Yeah? Yeah, they, yeah, they hold you back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They hold you back. You be all fifteen and that studying with, <laughs> with, with ten year olds. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Is that the whole of Africa like this? Yeah. I'm sure, yeah, yeah they don't, they don't push you forward right, if you're not yeah, yeah, yeah. academically up there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 sorry, go yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, I've noticed South London, Nigerians. Right. From the African continent, a lot of Nigerians. Yeah. Peckham, Lucian and so on. East London seems to be a lot of East Africans. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Kenyans, Zanzibaris, Tanzanians, Ugandans. Any, yeah, yeah. any reason ain't, behind ain't, ain't Uganda more like Central though? No, it's right no, next to East. East yeah. Next to Kenya, there's a border with Kenya. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, there's a lot of East uh, yeah. East Africans in the uh, East, yeah? yeah? East Africans in East. I'm surprised you don't know Uganda's East. Um, I'm East bad. Because right next, you got Uganda soldiers it was more going central Somalia. Uganda. You got Ugandan soldiers coming to Somalia and trying to govern a place yeah, and you're not even yeah, from yeah, there. Yeah, so you yeah, can yeah. kind of... I think with huh? Somalis, yeah. the world is Somalia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> North, South, East of the world is Somalia. Yeah. That's it, man. <laughs> there's nowhere else, bro. <laughs> But no, I didn't know. I thought it was more central when I last looked at the map. But they're right next to east. Yeah, next to yeah. No, Kenya. Kenya. Kenya's above uh, Uganda, and then you got Somalia above Kenya, isn't it? Mm. and you got Sudan on the north. Yeah, Sudan. Yeah. Kenya on the east, and was it the Lake Victoria? That kind of like between Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like yeah. yeah. He knows the geography, man. Yeah, mama, he's yeah, traveled yeah, there when yeah, he was 100. young. He's, he's the alchemist, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mum's the alchemist, bro. Like you read some books, yeah. Come on, okay. you know this already. <laughs> But Khair, so you've come here seven years old. You can speak the English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's life? In, how's life in school? Uh, just, you know, in school, you just you try to fit in in school. Um, obviously, everyone everyone's aware that you're foreign and stuff like that. So um, even the banter that they have, you know, you try so hard. But sometimes when you try hard, you know, you get people don't really take to people that try hard. You know mm. what I'm saying? You're not cool with it. You're trying to be cool type of thing. Mm. Um, so um, school is calm, to be honest with you. You know, did you face racism or anything like this? Nah, but you could feel it. You know, you could feel it um, due to the people that you associate with. You can see it growing up. You can see the black kids are with the black kids, and so there's segregation there. Do you which know which part of New were you in? Canning Town, Custom House, Canning Town. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, because Newham also has a large Asian community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Canning Town seems to be a bit kind of like, might maybe have changed now, yeah. where there's not that many Asians. Right, right, right. Did you kind of like suffer, like, let's say, from the Asian community racism as well? No, nah, no. Nah. Do you know what? I'll tell you what, though. Um, the So Canning Town and Custom House, an area called Custom House, we share the same postcode. A lot of Jews nowadays that are running around doing what they're doing now, they didn't, they, they didn't even know that, Custom House used to be racial, you know, like 
mad racial like mm. you know um the white boys around there used to kind of like jam it on you know the blacks and the asians so when they catch you they'll go around pedal biking right and when they catch you they're gonna peek it for you but obviously growing up now what custom house is now it's like gang infested and kind of times like gang infested the youths that are running around now don't, they're not aware of the uh the history, uh, the history of what what we had to face growing up so when you tell them right this area growing up <laughs> You just can't get caught aside, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, There's about yeah, 15 yeah. white boys peddling around. Crazy. Do you know what I mean? So and That's like 20 years ago. That's not even too, yeah, too yeah, long yeah, ago, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's like, where did all those people go, bro? Uh, they've grown up, man. Grown up, some of them have gone jail, mm. you know. Um, Similar to out. the roads, innit? Yeah. Similar to the roads, like now, like whoever was the main man or wherever, whatever, if you go to many areas now, like Ghetto, Peckham, all these areas, you wouldn't think there's gangs anymore. Like if you go back 10, 15 years ago, especially 15 years ago, 20, anywhere you went, you can, it's clear cut in your eyes that there's gangs in these areas. But as the years have gone, and I think the government has definitely come out with a way of putting the right people away. Some people die, like, that's yeah, just part yeah, of yeah. the streets. Yeah. And some people probably just leave the streets. I think that the 2012 Olympics, mm. right, because it had tourists coming in, they had to clear up, man. So many men came in jail. They had to clear up. They're like, yo, we got people from all types coming coming for the Olympics. Hell of man came in jail. Mm, you know, for the minutest things. A hell of man. Came Wasn't the 2011 jail. thing just before that? The, the riots. Thing? Yeah, yeah. Especially with the riots, the feds just had enough. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember actually. You know, I was inside that time. So what I remembered in prison. You know what they started to do? Everyone had single cells. They started to double people yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. People was getting doubled up. The, the prison was absolutely filled to the max. Yeah. People was getting let home early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was people that's like, I got like four weeks left, and it's like, yeah, you know what, you're going home. Literally, that's how packed. Oh, 11, late. Yeah, yeah, 12, 2012. 12, like that. Yeah, I remember that still. Yeah. And what they, what they ended up doing is, you know, like the um the families that, that you know, like from like Peckham and, and, and Hackney, you know, um, they, they ended up moving them to like places like Dagenham. Mm. You know, like Dagenham used to be like suburban white areas. Mm. Oh my gosh, you go there now, you know, it's 500 black kids. Mm. You know, and you're thinking, what the hell, where the hell did you lot come from? Yeah, but those yeah. are all the poor family because they needed to clear up, you know, like areas like Brixton. Course, Brixton's course. hella retro now. Do you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I said all of South London, I don't know about the other areas, but South London, they've cleaned up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they ended up in It's Dagenham. a good thing. I'm not even saying in a bad way, actually, personally. That's a good thing. That, you know, a lot of people now talk about all oh, the whole gentrification. Yeah, I get it. Like you're bringing a lot more so-called um, middle-class people to the area, whatever, whatever. But would you prefer to have middle-class people living in the area and less crime or poverty-stricken people creating more crime? I get the government's problem. You understand? Either you have to solve the problem by fixing the issue or you have to take the people creating the issue and move them to another area. Yeah. It's controversial. It's controversial. It's very controversial. I get it, but... But I think it's deep in the sense that, look, you know what they say, look, some of the hard, hard, hard drugs mm. are taken by who? Yeah, they'll say white kids. Yeah, or, or sometimes middle-class white people working in jobs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, So meaning, okay, you're creating something for them to kind of like be in an environment which is closer to central London mm. and in a city, but everybody else is because they're poor being moved moved out mm. it's not really addressing the issue it's not you, it's you not, understand it's not it's yeah. not it's, it's, it's like you're just putting a plaster on it mm. do you get what i mean and of course other crimes will come up but if you i'm just saying if you look around now it's definitely not as bad as it used to be mm. like for free mm. 2005 sixes fours threes sevens eights stabbings shootings was i think i'm sure 2006 or seven was the highest murder rate ever in the uk okay do you get what i mean and since then, yeah, there's been 100 murders or whatever, but you can't compare it to maybe 200 murders or 300 murders. And at those times, there was more guns than knives. So there was more gun shootings. Nowadays, there's much more Stabbing. stabbings, but those days, it was much more guns, MAC-10s and Glocks. And the, the guns that they was finding those days were ridiculous. So you have to choose between being controversial or saving lives. Or probably for them, maybe, maybe making money. That could be another angle. That's uh, I'm not in the government, it's obviously mine, but I can understand the logic of having to move people around and bring other people around to kind of maybe, I don't know, create an equilibrium, yeah. uh, however. But moving on anyway, and you're in school, you're saying it's not really an issue, obviously you're trying to fit in or whatever. Right, right. How was you study-wise though? Was you a person who liked studying or was it like a chore or what was studying like for you? I'm not gonna lie to you, throughout my whole life, yeah, up until like secondary school, I can't remember anything I learned. 
Okay, so you, mad, you just went, you just... But, but the, my, the crazy thing is I'm a smart guy. Mm. You know, I like, alhamdulillah, like, look, I'm a smart dude, mm. but, like, you know, you look back and you think, what the, what the hell was that all about? Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I can't tell you anything I studied in school. Mm. You know, um, even going into secondary school. After finishing as well? I didn't finish secondary school, no. You didn't finish secondary school? No, I got kicked out for selling drugs. Okay, yeah. what the age is this? Huh? What year was that? Year 10. So I was selling drugs in school. Mm. Um, I, I kind of used to be like a school bully as well. Okay. Um, but how did that happen? Because usually they say people that become bullies were bullied once. Did anything like that happen to you nah, first? Nah, but you know what? Can I say I was a... Now I, was a, I won't say I was a bully, but I was a... You know, you get... Do you know what? I, I won't say I was a bully, but I used to fight a lot, sorry. Mm. You know, I used to fight a lot. So I wouldn't but, fight. But you're not going to fight small guys. No, no, no. no, no fight I'll, I'll your fight, size. Yeah, I'll fight guys that will try not to have it. Yeah, especially. Yeah. But it wouldn't make sense me fighting guys that are smaller than me. Of course, of course. You know what I'm saying? That's how. That's one way of getting the whole school against you. Like, mm. you, know, do you know what I'm saying? No one loves yeah. a bully, but yeah. if you size up someone your size... Then... So you wasn't a bully because it nah, nah, would nah. be bullying someone who can't defend themselves. Yeah, I, was a shit, I was a little shit. I was a little shit in school. Okay. Um, you know, so... Fighting. Yeah, fighting, okay. fighting. I got excluded for fighting, mm. you know. And then when you get to fourteen, fifteen, you start thinking about making money, mm. you know. Um, but what's your reasoning for kind of like fighting? What's what's even saying that to you? You know, because that okay, it's not a norm. Yeah. yeah. Why were you, for example, was it racism that started? No. It? So no. What was uh, your reasoning? Trying to be the top, <laughs> the top dog in school. Okay. You know, like you try to be the number one that that guy. Do you know what I mean? Why though? Do you, in hindsight now, as you're older, do you look back on it and think to yourself, why was I like that? Um, it's, my school's full of black guys, man. Mm. Hello, black kids. So, you, you know. That's that. So the environment geared you into, yeah. I have to take a position and. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's one of them ones. Mm. And you'd always have guys from another um, form that don't like you. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Everyone's experienced that growing up. And do you know what it is as well? I think in school, when you touch down school, you always have guys older than you beating on beating on you because yeah, you're younger yeah, than yeah, them yeah, do you know what I'm saying so you give them the mouth and they'll chase you around so it's like the, ho the whole cycle of violence goes on someone new comes in and you're like yeah I'm gonna you're gonna do the same thing that was done to you kind yeah of. but yeah but not to that extent because you know what it feels like mm. but then the older you lot get everyone branches up and then guys that you first came in with are now like enemies and that mm. not enemies but yeah them it starts off like that side. yeah do you know what I'm saying where was your dad in all of this my dad was around my dad was around but um so in year 10 when this is happening Prior to that, because no one just sells drugs straight away. No one just gets into gangs straight away. Right. There's a there's a there's a creeping effect. Now there was um there was some uh, there was some boys that used to hang around with after school. Mm. Um, that used to smoke weed actually. Mm. Um, so you know you watch, you know them picking up weed and they spend the money on weed and you're like, oh, you know what, this could actually be a business. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And you know um you get into that by you know saving up some money and. Mm you know, um, trying to do the same thing and supplying them instead of them giving the money to someone else. Okay. But to get into that, like, did your dad know about your footsteps on the streets nah, at that stage? No, nah, 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 nah. So you was living like two different lives? Yeah. To be honest with you, my whole life's been two different lives. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, leading up to now, do you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, um, um, in what sense? So on the streets at that age, you're doing the road? But yeah, then when been, you go home, I've you're always, a good boy. I've always been, nah, I've, I've, I've always been a, a guy that tries to do both, you know. Um, and I find that that doesn't work for me because I'm a bit, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, my, my character is extreme. I'm either on or off, mm. you know. I, I, but I try to do the in-between. And that's where my life's kind of um, took a downward spiral, mm. you know. Um, One of the things that comes up in our discussion with a lot of the brothers that come on the podcast is, was dad around? I think Abdul Latif brings it up usually. Mm. You know, and in most cases, dad is not around. You know, he's left mum or he's abroad and so on. So, you know, maybe from Abdul, Abdul Latif's perspective, he sees it as a, okay, it's a problem. There's no authority that, figure. Yeah, that might have had an yeah. impact, a negative impact on, 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 on a young man, on a young boy. Uh, you said in the beginning, look, you know, me and Pops are close. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was a good relationship. And then you also mentioned he came here, but, you know, got married here. Yeah. So dad was around in your life. <laughs> What do you then see as a reason for kind of like going towards, okay, I didn't do well in education, got kicked out in year 10 for selling drugs, yeah. you know? Um, I think the more you grow up and the company that you keep, um, you tend to push push against 
what your parents try to do. Your parents can try to do the best that they can with you, you know. But at the end of the day, it's the friends that you keep around. It's the things that you glorify slightly, you know, even though you, you know, you hide it. You know, um, all these things can, you know, lead someone down. So your parents can try so hard. Parents can try hard with their kids, but at the end of the day, you know, it's you know, it has to be within the kid himself. By a certain age, it's it's it's, it's you really, isn't it? Yeah, ten, you're like fifteen. Yeah, that, that, this is it. This when I so when me and you have this conversation, man, you already know. Like that's why I say, fifteen, you're a man. Like, the world doesn't want to see it in this country, but you're actually a man. Right. Like you act like a man. You're doing things that like taking lives and selling drugs and wherever else you're trying to get a woman. That's what men do. It's just that in this country, because we've put certain ages on things like sixteen, you're only allowed to drive and this kind of stuff. We still think you're a kid, but as that kid. He f- sees himself as a man at 15. He actually thinks I'm stronger than an 18-year-old, the 20-year-old. I can run a dynasty. That's what the brain thought is at that age. Mm. As a parent, you're thinking, this is just my kid that I raised up two years ago and he's still... It doesn't work like that. Do you get what I mean? So that's the narrative problem that we have. We have to start treating these kids from 13, 14 like men, like you're a man. Take responsibility for your actions daily. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. so when I ask about the father, it's a real father that's involved in his son's life or daughter's life, whatever, would understand what the what's happening around them. Where am I living? What kind of things are being taught in school? What is my son or daughter watching when they're at home? Should I watch it with them? Let me break it down for them. Sadly, from our generation, obviously your dad was a bit earlier, he came, but many generations, or sorry, many uh, cultures, they just came, so they don't. The English isn't their first language, so I get that one. It's a bit problematic, but our generation are a bit older now. We're thirties or whatever. As a man, you should be able to understand where you live now. We're second generation, third generation. We should be able to tell our kids, look, this is what this is, this is what A, this is what B is. Stay away from this son. And of course, after that, if they do what they got to do, they, that's not your dad's fault. That's not your mom's fault. You've chosen a path. That's wrong. Your dad was righteous. Your mom was righteous. You just chose to going a path, that's wrong at the end of the day. Mm. So was that kind of your thing that your dad was there, he was on you, but- Nah, do you know what? My dad, um, he was always working, mm. you know, like, you know, especially if you come here and English ain't your first language, so you're gonna get the worst of the worst jobs. Mm. That means you have to work twice as hard. You're never really at the house. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. He tried his hardest to discipline, but what the thing is, I grew up with mom. I used to be back and forth between my dad and my mom. My mom was your mom came here as well. Yeah, my mom came here. She owned a bri- uh, business in Croydon. Okay, in okay. Um, when in Uganda, my mom was solid. You know, like as in a, a woman. Mm. I've never met anyone like her. She was a bit like a, you know, like a Margaret Thatcher type mm. of woman. You know, like an iron lady. Yeah, she she disciplines grown men. Mm. You know, like one of those women. Mm. So um, that kind of rubbed off on me a little bit. You know, um. Like I said, I'm either on or off. Mm. So if we're going to do something, I'm either fully involved oh, or I'm not doing this at all because there is no in between. And that's where my life, like I said, it kind of messed up. Mm. Even in school, le- leading to me getting kicked out of school. I, I think I was selling drugs for like two days in school. Right? That, that, that didn't last. Of course. So some kids come to me and they said, hey, man, you got weed? I said to them, yeah, yeah, I got some weed. I said, how much you want? They're like, yeah, 15 pounds worth, right? There's two kids. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, Prof. And they're your age? No, nah, they're younger than me. They're like, they yeah, yeah, eight or something. You know, you get them young kids that are from, you know, that like dysfunctional yeah, families, functional that family, they smoke yeah. weed from young. Mm. So I didn't really care about the age. You got money, you want weed. I got that, I, I sell them the weed. When I sell them the weed, they go behind the music block, I roll out the weed, right? They smoke it. One of them passes out, starts fitting from the mouth. So his little friend starts panicking, looks around, runs to the head teacher. Ah, my friend is back. Right? The teacher comes around, sees the kid fitting out. He's like, what did he take? <laughs> right? The kid's panicking. The weeds, the roach is on the floor. The half of the spliff's on the floor. Mm. They go, ah, weed. Right? <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> Next thing, the police, uh, they, they call the ambulance. The police gets called in. I'm sitting in class. Right. So one of the boys comes into the class and go, rah, the police is outside. Right? The same um, ones that you sold to? No, 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 some next boys. Oh, just so random. His feds outside. Mm. I got weed in my bag. So I'm thinking, rah, that's, what's going on? So anyway, someone comes running. I said, oh, I've heard them say your name, Adam. They're coming for you. So now I'm panicking. I've looked around, right? The class, I've said, yo, because I called the teacher out. I said, yo, who wants to take this bag for me? 
right? I was meant to be Mr. Popular in, in class. All the guys are doing that, right? So there was one guy that used to annoy me, that used to kind of lean on a little bit, yeah. He goes, I'll do it for you, Adam. Not thinking, panicking, I just said, yeah, hold that bag. Yeah, he's held the bag, the feds have called me out. As if caught called me out, they're interviewing me, asking me questions outside to the next room, the kid, the same kid that's took the bag. He's looking at you. You know, he's come out and handed it over to the feds. Here's his bag, <laughs> right? Oh my gosh, <laughs> done. <laughs> my career in school's done, never went back. I, I, I got nicked. The same one you was leaning on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was a payback. <laughs> <laughs> that was a payback. And do you know what I found out as well? Yeah. It was police cadet as well. He <laughs> said <laughs> it was part of the police already. It's part of the police cadet. I'll hold it for you. Yeah, I'll hold it for you. I thought, rah. Do you know what? And do you know what? I felt guilty for leaning on him all those years. I thought, yeah, rah. Yeah, yeah. Little man stepping up to try and help me. Like, <laughs> all those years. And I felt so bad I'm sitting in a class. So when the feds have called me out, They've got me in another room. He's come out. I swear he's got a smirk on his face as well. He's handed it over to the feds like this, looking at me like this. I said, yeah. I should have known better. Yeah, I never went back to school ever since that day. I, was, I ended up in the police station. Okay, so that yeah. became a criminal record, really, yeah, you know? Yeah, reprimanded, you know, like kicked out, okay. permanently excluded. Okay. From there, straight into like, you know, like them schools where... All the for kids, all the bad centres, like centres. Yeah, centres, straight mm. to a centre. So they didn't give you a criminal record for that? Like, they didn't... Reprimanded, reprimanded. Okay, you know? okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I didn't force the weed down the kid's throat. Force. All right, I was selling, but, you know, remember, I'm like 15. Mm. You know, you can't really... Up until you're 18, you can do as much. Obviously, it's not about doing crime, but you can do as I'm much to them. and get away with it. As soon exactly. as you touch 18 and you go to prison once, mm. you're done. Anything you do, you breathe the wrong way, you fart the wrong way, back in jail. Mm -hmm. do you know what but I'm that's saying? the point where I was just saying about the age. It's the age. When we tell people you're this age, you become an adult, we're leaving that little leeway to make them look like you're not an adult. You're an adult, bro. When you're just selling at that age... yeah. Even though we're telling you you're not all adult, you're, you're doing adult stuff. 100%. You're being calculated, you're measuring, you're calculating, you're selling. That's a business mind at 15 years old. Yeah. We think like, oh, 15, you're a big man, bro. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Do you get what I'm trying to say to you? 100%. So cool, you're arrested, you're obviously gone. What's happening now then? You're so obviously, obviously you're going to the centre. So I'm going to the centre. So What's Pop said when you when he heard about this? Oh, my Pop's was mad disappointed. I don't remember what he had said, but I... I that... So it was in your house like a beating house? Where yeah, you... yeah, we used to hold that. Okay. We used to hold that. Adam! <laughs> Come downstairs. I grew up in a house full of six, five girls. Okay. One brother. So as soon as you hear that, oh, I'm clipping your nose. You know what's going on. You're the oldest? No, I'm like uh, the third. The third oldest. So when you get called downstairs, you're thinking, is it a cable? Is it a stick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you can't rub it. You know, you just have to lay there, spread it on, on the floor. No. Every lash, if you rub it, you start again. Okay. So yeah, it's proper discipline and going on in the house. Plus education. I mean, I don't know about now, but I think initially when the first kind of like, you know, uh, people came from Africa or yeah. even Asia and so on. Used to that. It's like we've come to this country for you to get an education. Now you're getting kicked out. Yeah. You know, not even like don't come with B grades. Mm. It's got to be A. Gotta and be A's. Believe, it, believe it or not, African families and Asian families, they on to you. You know, like, as a kid, you got to do well. Mm. Believe it or not, even it's, it's a pity. High like, standards. Cause, yeah, because look, the, predominantly the Asian community get a lot of doctors in there, right? And the African families, your parents will push for you to be a doctor, yeah, doctor. But somewhere along the line, you bump into someone that just goes, hey, man, I've got something for you, innit? Mm. You forget about all that school stuff. Mm. And, you know. Uh, and, and it's similar to what you see, though. The, the reason why, I say, maybe a lot of black youngsters get into it more than, say, Asians, even though Asians started to get into it as well as the years went on, is that it's someone who looks like you. It's another black person who has similar features than you. So that kind of... Uh, mentality of herding comes into it. Right. It's another black person. Yeah. yeah. Looks cool. As an Asian person coming into it, unless you was raised there from a very young age and it's a norm to you. Yeah. But if you're, if you just come to our country mm. and these are, you're not just going to jump into another group who look different from you and jump onto their culture. Mm. It takes years. Hence why the Asian community or whatever didn't do the whole gang thing until maybe they saw more Jamaicans doing it or, do you know what I mean? Right, right. That's, that's the perspective I saw anyway. I didn't see a lot of multiculturalism apart from the younger generations that was born into it. It wasn't the ones that just came from Africa or Jamaica or whatever. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So cool, you're obviously in centre. Your dad, I'm guessing, gave you a little licking or whatever. Yeah, yeah. This but for you, was that like, this is the beginning of the roads now for me? Yeah, 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 100%. Because I took my business from school to, to the roads now. I'm selling okay. drugs on the roads. Mm. Um, you know, selling a bit of weed. <laughs> and then Russian man as well. You know, like Russian was a big thing. Yeah, that was Russian. Was it Red Letters that used to play? 
No, no, I'm talking about rushing other boys. You know, like, in yeah. my area, there was a lot of, um, there was boys schools, you know, like, boys from other areas will actually come in and just literally wrap you just up. Just rush you up. Like yeah. And but rushing, was, rushing in a sense of beating to, to really harm or what? Yeah, 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 beating you to harm. But the thing is, I tried to be an MC growing up, innit? Okay. Like, a lot of men are going to be like, yeah, we've been waiting for that. Yeah, I used to, I used to try and do this MCing thing hard. Okay, okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Around that, what year was this now? Because that, that, there was a that's, period. Yeah, that's 16. Okay. You know, like 16. Try to see this MCing thing hard, and that's when my life went down the toilet, bro. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Because now you're MCing, right? You're trying to do music, and I ain't even gonna lie to you. Trying to do music kind of just, that's what set my life off course. Because mm. you try to do the most, you know, you go to youth clubs and you MC and stuff like that. So you meet other guys in youth clubs, you clash. Mm. When you have a clash and you lose mm -hmm. or you win, the guy's taking offense to it and he's coming over about 20 of these boys. Mm. You're trying to embarrass me in front of my boys, you get rushed. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you go back to your area and you get boys in your area, so it's back and forth type mm. of thing. So, 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 because a lot of times when we talk about solutions to gangs today, youth club comes up. But obviously, you've just brought up youth club and said youth club was actually a place where more gangs kind of really met up. And to be fair, I can kind of concur when we used to go youth clubs, that was more of another place where we'd be talking certain things and Organising, so I don't know with the whole youth club uh, solution personally. Do you get what I mean? Because if I'm in gangs and I have a youth club near me, then every friend that's yes. in gangs is also coming yeah. to that youth yes, club. 100%. And uh, youth runners don't have that level of control. Right. In fact, they get bullied and probably coerced. Right, right. right. Do you get what I'm trying to say to you? So that's just a side note that I don't think this whole push for more youth clubs, unless the youth clubs are going to be run in a very productive, stern, military kind of maybe official guys that these youngsters have to respect maybe but if it's some soft dolls the direction they are coming from in terms of youth clubs it's not like an islamic paradigm people might be smoking they're smoking mm -hmm. weed yeah they do. boys are linking girls girls yeah. are linking you know is that a conducive environment for bettering you know making youngsters better mm. you know it, it isn't mm. and like you're saying in some cases in many cases it makes the situation worse it does yeah it does. I didn't see it as a positive thing. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. But did I, you? Did you? Did you end up 15, 16? Okay, you know, that's you've got kicked out of school, going centre. Things are not working out. You're MCing. Did Dad turn around and say, "Look, you know what? You you can't just be here now. Start your own life." Did you leave home, or were you still at home no, doing that, something? That came. That came. The whole area. The whole barrow's on me. Right. The whole barrow. You know, of this guy where he where he's where from rush no they're from my borough oh this is from same borough the same borough okay. but the little man that got rushed his brother was like the main guy in the borough the number one guy in the mm. borough at the time mm. so as we're running off i don't know obviously I don't, i've never been the type of guy to do things with a mask on because i'm bare tall you see me coming from a mile down the road or whatever so i always try to slide hide in plain sight and anyway, i've gone to get my dog back he shied out girls i don't even know who shied out my name the, the other guys that were involved in never being caught cool in nothing because they're they covered up or whatever. Mm -hmm. So now I'm hearing there's a hundred K on me, right? A hundred grand. On your head? On me. And that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So you can just about tell if this guy is willing to cough up about a hundred K, mm -hmm. right? I want this guy gone, this mm -hmm. little man gone. Um, you can just about guess how much money this guy's got. Mm -hmm. um, and he's a grown man. He's a grown man. For your age. He's a big, he was a big man for me at mm -hmm. the time. What happened with that situation? Did he kind of like... Uh... So they got uh, my picture, like a clown. Remember, I used to MC. So when you're MC, you got MySpace. Do you remember MySpace? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, dude. <laughs> they got my picture off MySpace. They had a meeting and passed my picture around about 100 youths. He's telling these youths, if you see this kid ring me, right? And I remember I went to go and buy weed. Remember, I'm still selling weed. Next thing, motorbikes have pulled up. Cars have pulled up. I don't even recognise the guys at the time. Right. Um, now I'm about 17. Right. I don't even recognize. But now I'm like fully You're doing bits there. on the roads. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah, doing yeah, bits yeah, on yeah. roads, fully selling in. drugs, getting taking chases from police and stuff like that. Now they've circled me. So I'm, I've recognized a few guys that have circling me. I'm thinking, you guys, we lined you up in the, in the, in the leisure center. Now. Like, I'm not running from you guys, mm. but they had something nice, special somewhere. coming for me. Now they had something coming for me. There's more guys that were coming to do the mm. works. They were just there to hold me. So yeah, um, cars pulled up, men that I've never seen before, motorbikes, you know what I'm saying? It's you on your ones. Yeah, me on my ones. Actually, I was with I was with another man, but he froze. Of course. Um, to grip me, 
asked me, you know, who I am. Obviously, I'm trying to do this whole cocky thing. You know, the guy was kind of stocky at the time, gripped me, swept me, and I was skinny mm. at the time, held me down, fear flying in. Bike chains. Mm. I hear bike chains. You know the bike chains that used to lock motorbikes, not pedal bikes? Mm -hmm. Cling, cling on my head, bike helmets. Cling, cling, cling. I passed out. This is outside of, uh, a secondary school, mm. broad daylight, mm. you know, and someone stabbed me in the stomach with a samurai. So it was a samurai sword. I was unconscious when I got stabbed in the samurai. 07. Mm. You know, he's talking about 07. 07, yeah. 07 is where you do, that's where shit was happening. Mm. So, yeah, they, I remember my clothes being cut off because when you get stabbed, they've got to check yeah. and see if you've got stabbings anywhere. Put on a stretcher. I remember kids are eating chicken and chips. It's a lunchtime. They're crying. You know what I'm saying? I'm butt naked on a bloody stretcher. I'll get them chucked in the back of the ambulance. Yeah, and I woke up about three three weeks later. Using a coma for three yeah, weeks? Yeah, for three, three weeks. Three weeks. I had, you know, like when you have like a urethra thing in your private parts to wee, you know, you got the thing in your throat. I remember when so they week, damaged like, you properly. Yeah, 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 yeah. They had to open me up. They done like a, like a, like a, you know, like a, what do you call that? Open, not C section, but reverse C section guy. Yeah, so yeah, I got the yeah. zipper thing. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And that's how deep it went. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. It, it sunk into me. I think that's what woke me up because I was unconscious. As soon as something sunk into my stomach, pierced my intestines, mm. and done it again. Um, yeah, but alhamdulillah, man. You know, I survived. I came back. Mm. Um, but that's when you know. You went further in? That's when I made that's when I became who I am after that. Okay. In my became, area. Became more what, sorry? I became who I am, like, like I was known as in my area. Okay, so that. that did have a I mean, I was hoping or thinking, you know what, that should have been. Nah, nah. Man I was like, I'm out of here, man. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. I'm I went back I went a hundred levels above that. Mm. I went so some that's the that's the thing though. Sometimes some people they see that as a, as a sign and they're out. Other people, that becomes like the the the, the furnace to to become even worse. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. And I'm guessing that's the path you took. That that became now that's your when, yeah. That's when I became ghost. Okay. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So I come out of hospital for right? weeks. Yeah, yeah. So obviously you can suffer. You, you can just about imagine the trauma that your body's gone under. They've opened you up. I'm learning how to walk again. Mm. You know. And the, the stabbing wasn't the, the, the worst part. It's the healing process. That's the mm. worst part. You know, at nighttime when everyone's asleep and your stomach feels like it's got coal in it, you know, like hot burning coal. Mm. And you're taking all the, what is the morphine that they, they give you that stuff ain't even working no more. Mm. Do you know mm. what I'm saying? You're just trying to move around. It was an excruciating experience for me, mm. you know. Mm. But um, after that, I went into guns, mm. you know. I, had, I was a gun freak, freak you know, that's obsessed with guns. You know, and that's how I ended up getting kicked out of my, my, my mum's house. She ended okay. up saying to so me. sorry. So just uh, taking you back, Adam. So you moved from dad to mum's house. No, dad and mum were together. Okay. Stepmom and dad. Oh, stepmom. Yeah. No, okay. Yeah. No, not your mum. No, no, no. no she was still back in Uganda. Okay, your stepmom. Yeah. And that's the one you're referring to. She was kind of like with, with discipline. The stepmom. No, no, my biological mum. Biological solid one. Yeah. But but she was in. She didn't come to Uganda. No, nah, she didn't come yet. She hadn't come to come to the country yet. Okay. Um, so they mum and stepmom and dad kicked you out of the house. My my mum, she found my second gun. You know, I started carrying guns because I was I started thinking, bro, I'd rather get caught with it than without okay. it. Especially after that excruciating experience, I'm like, yo, do you know what? I think I started because I'm selling weed now. You know, I've been selling weed, so I got money saved up. So I'm like, you know, I still need to go back out and hustle. I need a gun. So next time they pull out on me because the job's not done. Mm -hmm. You know, and at this time I wasn't actually ready to. Shoot anyone. I'm thinking if he comes out and it's worst case scenario, then I'll pull it out and I'll try to back him up. If they don't back up, then who knows what happens? Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're about, you're about 18 now? No, 17. Still 17? Yeah, yeah. Six, 16, 18 towards 17. Mm -hmm. Were you rolling with any any guys yourself or were you just you're like your own man? No, nah, I used to roll with two men, but you know, they were just, the violence was limited. You know, like what? limited violence. They would, they would just about rush you and stuff like that. Okay, why, why did you choose Ghost as a. Um, name. Yeah, I actually used to be my MC name at the time. Mm. Um, that used to be my MC name, and that's the name that I chose. What was the reason for in your MC as your MC name as well? Because uh, my brother used to be called something else, so that, like so ghost related. So we used to be like two dudes that were just MCing at the time. But as I got older, I've actually, you know, like that name actually, you know, suited. Yeah, suited. What the, the, the kind of activities that I got up to mm. at the time. So um, yeah, my mum, my mum found a gun. At the time, um, your stepmom. Yeah, my stepmom found a gun at the time mm -hmm. um, in the house. Come out of the house. Yeah, because she used to be suspicious. Like, yeah, well, my mum's been stabbed. What's she keeping up with? So she searched my room one time. She found a shotgun, mm -hmm. and then she, you know, um, 
um, and she threw it in the bin. My sister told me my mum found the gun and she threw it in the bin. So I went in the bin and got it out. Right, so I knew, all right, cool, I can't keep it in the house, I can't keep it there. One time I had like a, you know, like a 4 4 bulldog, you know, like them handguns, like a very high powered gun. And uh, my mum found it. This is still the same year, right? And um, she said to me, I said to her, Ra, now I've got to confront her. I said, Ra, mum, um, you found something in my room. Yeah, she's waiting for me to confront her and ask her because it was expensive, man. And she says, yes. Um, I said, Ra, um, can I have it back? You know, the c- common thing that people say is, it's not mine. I'm <laughs> holding it for someone. Yeah. Just so you don't look like a monster in front of your mum. Mm. <laughs> it's not mine. I have to give it back. My mum said, well, it's either I'll get rid of it or you get out of the house. And I said, right, if you give it to me, I'll get out of the house. She says, yeah. I said, cool, you have to give it to me. She gave it to me and that's left when, the house. Yeah, I left the house, mm. you know. Um, and then what, you had to find out, I'm guessing, your own living ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, then you know, you go into hostels and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That you whole know. process. Yeah, but now, because I'm selling weed and i got guns, I've started putting them out on, man, you know. So the- where originally it started from the mindset of, if this happens to me, I'm only going to bring it no. out. Now it's, I'm confident with now him. Now I'm jamming, man, with him. Mm. You know, I hadn't started shooting yet. Mm. But that's yeah. the sequence. Yeah, and now well, I'm this, jamming. This, the sequence you're talking about is literally the sequence that most people, that whether it's a knife or a gun, right. start with. Yeah. Whether they've been beaten up or whether they've been stabbed, it's like, oh, it's, whole, it's for self-defense. Yeah. But then the self-defense de- becomes, I'm confident with it now. Exactly. It's part of my persona. Exactly. I'm that guy now. Yeah. And it's only a matter of time until... Right. The other part comes Right So now I'm jamming Everyone I get into a situation With I pull it out Jam it in your ribs Right Man t- I got into a confrontation with Someone at college Some boys from Hackney So I used to go to college In Tower Hamlets Which wasn't in my borough I get into a confrontation With some boys They ended up rushing me Right in front of some girl That I was talking to at the time So I went home And got my gun From the house Right So I've come back to the college Right when I've come back to the college, I see the same guys that tried to rush me. So I chase one of them into the estate. He, he trips up. As he trips up, I, had a, I remember I had a silver shotgun at the time. I whack him in the head with it like it's a pole, right? Busts his head. He gets up, runs towards security that was at the college, mm. screaming, ah, he's got a gun. I've seen him grasp me up, so I dashed it in a bush, walked into the college that like nothing's happened, right? And just in case he rings his brother's back, my gun's outside, mm. right? Um, I'm sat in college. I'll never forget this. Armed response turns up to the college. We're all sat there, right? I've seen movement at the door. You see the little, the little um, thingy at the door, right? They're looking, they're looking. They call the teacher out, same thing. College, I can't make it. School, I can't make it. Oh, please! You know how they come in, innit? Get on the floor! Because the kid saying it's in his bag. It wasn't in my bag. Mm. So the police dragged me out. College pulling me. All the kids are in there. The girls are in there. They're traumatised. Oh, my gosh! Do you know what I mean? So... It's a joke. Mm. What's happening? They've thrown me over the table, everything. They've dragged me to another room. They said, where is it? Mm. You know, all that shite and stuff. I said, where is what? They said, where's that gun? I said, what are you talking about? What gun? They said, you got a gun? I said, I ain't got no gun. They said, you hit someone with a gun. Where is it? I looked at the officer. I said, there wasn't a gun. He said, what was it? I said, it was a scaffolding pole. That's what I had, mm. right? And the officer was fuming, right? He turned around and got to, turned around and started blasting the you that's got the security to call the police. Mm-hmm. You're wasting police time. Right? So I've got away with it at the time. Mm-hmm. So they, didn't, they didn't look around or nothing. No, no, no. Even if they looked around, the bush that I stashed it in wasn't near the college. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm thinking it's nothing, right? Police were on me ever since then. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, once you're marked for yeah, gun violence, I They're see. on me. And at the time it wasn't violence. Right? That's before I went to prison. It wasn't violence, right? So um, they started flooding my yard. They come run up in my mom's house, right? I remember once I'm sleeping in my mom's house. I hear, I hear a helicopter, yeah, above the roof. So I'm thinking, yo, what's that? Right? They're, they're blocking the back garden. The helicopter's there because I, I used to live in the middle. You know that our houses were grouped together. Mm-hmm. So you got to jump about seven fences just to get over to my garden, and they, they want to cover the exit. So they've got a helicopter out, right? Shining a light on the back on, on the back um, back door. Mm. I hear the helicopter. Down. So I'm thinking, yo, what is that? It's right above my, my my roof. So I run downstairs. This time I got my gun in the back garden, stashed next to my coke, next to my weed. But I used to stash it slightly into the next door neighbor's thing. So as I get to the bottom of the stairs, woof, the door flies off. Shields, red beams on my chest. Get out of the floor! 
They're shouting different commands. So you're thinking, right, go on the floor, hands in the air, hands behind my head. What is it? I'm in my boxes. Get out of the floor. So I get on the floor, right? I come through. I remember my older sister, right? They put me in a car, right? They wrap foil around you to put me in a car. And um, my older sister got dragged out of the house. She's looking at me. I'm thinking, oh, shit. I hope they don't find anything. My sister looks pissed. That's the first time she's experienced that type of aggression. Mm. They've searched the house. They didn't find the mash. They didn't find the gun. I'm like, yo, they didn't find the gun, right? The coke's still there. The weed's still there. The gun's still there. Calm, right? So now, remember, I've been kicked out of the house. So I've come back there because my mom's gone abroad. Okay. Yeah. So I'm living there now. But even though, and it was easier for me to get to and from the college, right? Because it's Newham is next to Utah Hamlets. Mm-hmm. But the place that I had was in the far end of Newham towards Ilford. So that's like a mission, mm-hmm. right? And at the time, I hadn't got a driver's license, mm-hmm. right? So I'm not trying to travel back and forth and go to college back and forth. Mm-hmm. I just used to have my gun with me, shotgun or, or a handgun, whatever. My cocaine in one bag, weed in another, you know, sorry, in, in my, sorry, my trench coat, because I used to walk around with a trench coat. Like yeah, all they, in the they, they used to call it Lengman coke. Yeah, area. yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to have that. Mm. Yeah, coke in here, the 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 the, the, um, the weed in here, my shotgun here. Because mm. right. it used to be just sorry. So this jacket basically used to be the only jacket that could cover having a sawn yeah, shotgun. Sawn so shotgun. people used to, and the only people that used to have it, that jackets, is people that had something. Yeah, even summertime, so, even summertime, even summertime. Even summertime. summertime. That's why they make they, they make memes especially about road summertime. People. Yeah, especially sometimes yeah. it's hot. It's summer. Why well, this guy got some big length? <laughs> right. You know something's wrong. So now they've searched the house to find nothing. I'm like, yeah, I think they're off me now. So anyway, I'm going to my new place. I've got a place from the council, a flat. I'm in my flat, right, sleeping. Right, this is hilarious. I, I've got my shotgun by the windowsill. I'm sleeping. They're back again. There's scaffolding around the flat because the flat was getting refurbished, right? And it's one of those tar, tar blocks. I hear, oh, police! I'm thinking, oh my gosh, again. The door flies in. But this time I got a plastic door fitted because I've seen on SWAT, you know, like the, 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 the plastic door, it just bounces back the thing. So I've got a plastic door fitted. I hear, poof, poof, poof. I'm in there with the gun at the window, so I've jumped out of my boxes. At the time I had a Japanese Akita, a little puppy, I love dogs. Run to the scaffolding, there's a back door near the balcony, threw the shotgun out. They're on the scaffolding already with torches. And it hits the you. armed officer. It hits the armed officer. He falls off the scaffolding, bruv. Mm. Imagine that. It falls off the scaffolding. I see one of the lights disappearing because I see a torch and a Glock yeah. on the end of the scaffolding. He falls off, right? I'm thinking, shit, right? The shotgun's opened up. The shells have dropped in a wire free bag that used to carry it in, right? Mm. So it's opened up. So now you can't even see that the sh- shells were in the gun, yeah. but the shells are actually are in the gun. Yeah, but it just fell out when exactly. he was... Right, so I remember they jumped off the scaffolding, tucked me, and that's the first time I went to prison. Mm. That was my first first gun charge. Okay, so 18, that you got done for that charge. Yeah, 18. Um, 18. 18. 18. So uh, that, obviously they can't say possession with intent then. That was more like... Yeah, just possession. Possession, possession with ammunition. Yeah. Calm. Mm. Went away, saw enough shotgun, I'm 18, right? And I just, you know, like, you know, caught in it. When you're 18, you just play it because you're a kid. Mm. I got three years. I got three years, do 18 months, nothing. No way. Nothing. Usually they give like five, six years. Yeah, for yeah, that. yeah. I got three years. You know, five, six years for a handgun at the time, innit? Because mm-hmm. it's actually uh, is made for concealing. But the shotgun, you can find it on a farm, mm. saw it down. It's not like you've had it imported into the country and yeah, it's made yeah, for concealing. Yeah. So you actually get done. Less for that. Yeah, less for that. You, I've seen people in jail that end up with a year in prison for having a shotgun that's not sawn, mm. but they haven't got a license for it. Mm. You know, that's the first time. And you know, I've met a lot of men. Some of these, the guys that you see on Instagram now that are big on Instagram now is in YO with these guys. Mm. So we all grew up together in a YO. Predominantly, you know, it's hella side foods. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? So the, uh, this is 17, 18 now? This is 18. 18. I remember first guy in prison. I was skinny. Remember, I'd just been stabbed. I've come out of a coma. I'm like 10 stone, you know. Um, so in prison, fighting, a lot of fighting happens in prison. Remember, I've been fighting in school. Where's this Feltham now? I went Feltham. The worst okay. bullying happens. The worst mm. bullying. Obviously, not me at the time, but I just keep quiet because it's my first time in jail. So I'm observing. I'm more of a, a... I've got predatory traits where I observe the room. I keep quiet and I see who's who type of thing. Mm. You know, well, who's where's the hierarchy? Who's doing bits? Felt them bad for bullying, man. Yeah, felt them. Yeah. Bad bullying in Felt them. Those kids, 
Mm. I, I went Feltham. I went Chelmsford. Mm. Right? I went Chelmsford. That was the experience. I was like grown men mixed with YOs. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I ended up in Rochester after... after yeah. um, to Felt. finish off your sentence. Yeah, finish off my sentence. And that, that was very light. Mm. So when I come out, I, could, I even come out tenfold worse. I'm like 18 months. Nothing. Mm. Right? I'm, I'm like, yeah, calm. Yeah, so prison I've hit... Prison's nothing. Your yeah, prison's nothing. Right, that's all I've been scared of this whole time. That's nothing. So I've hit the roads tenfold worse now. Mm. Yeah. Question, the Dean side, when, when did the uh, Islam side... Uh, that's come when I've gone back in. Later now. on. Yeah, yeah no, not too later on, about a year. So, okay, so I've come out now. Um, I've come out... 19. 19, 19, about to turn 20, right? So I've been in a lot of physical fights and stuff like that. And they're like, hella south, man. Mm. I'm Muslim. Mm. You find in prison, a hella south, man, I'm Muslim. Yeah. But the thing is with me, uh, even though my mum was Muslim, she wasn't like a fully practicing Muslim woman. Do you get it? So, and at the time, um, preaching the deen was not something I was going to, I would hear what you got to say out of politeness, but it wasn't for me at the time. And believe it or not, growing up, I've always been like a, a religious person. So growing up, I've always been aware that there's something out there that's watching us. You know, I'm sorry. You know, as a kid, I used to watch TV and then laugh to myself and say, look at these idiots. They don't know I'm watching them. And then I'll stop and say, just as I'm watching them, I wonder if there's someone out there watching me. Do you know what I'm saying? So you can see the thinking as a kid. Yeah. Um, so I've been in every religion growing up, like, you know, and I'll pick it apart because I'm a, I'm a ruminator. I'm a thinker, you know, so I'll pick holes through the story that you're giving me. And if I pick holes through it, you know, uh, uh, that, that's not for me. So by the time I went back to prison the second time round, I was one of them people that if I catch you, if I don't catch you, I'll do your friends. Like, I don't discriminate. I'll catch you or I don't catch you. If I bump into your friends because I know their faces, I'm doing them. I'm not talking, none of that, you know. Yeah, but even with, with, with that topic of friends, uh, I, I've always said that the majority of people that die actually are associates. Yeah, they're not actually the people that you actually want. Yeah, they're going to hiding. They go having because they know what they've done, yeah. or you know, and even if they don't go into hiding, they've got their piece. So even if you was to come to them, they can. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So usually, the, if you look at most murders and you go back in history now, the majority of people that died are just friends of a serious person. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're not even the person who done the issue in the first place, and that person might end up going to prison and doing many years or you know, whatever happens to him. Yeah. So I, I kind of get that. But I do also think streetwise, when we used to look back on it, that was a very bad thing to be doing because we're killing innocent people rather than killing, even though person. both are bad, but then rather than doing the person who's willing to kill you. Yeah, yeah. That one you can understand, like you're willing to kill me, I'm going to have to kill you. But when it's someone's friend and that person, do you get what I mean? Yeah, but you know, I used to see it as, I used to see it as if I ping you, mm your friends are going to be with you to come and retaliate. Mm. And then I'll be thinking, oh man, I should just ping these friends as well. Mm. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'll give you a reason to come look for me. Mm. I'm going to give you one anyway by pinging your friend. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? So if I don't catch your friend, I'm going to, do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Ping you over. Mm -hmm. And ever since that day, I just went off the rails. Mm. Um, and just more crimes basically nah, accumulated. Yeah, I just, I stopped selling drugs mm. and I just started robbing man. Mm. But I just, I used to do like, you know, like big crimes. I'll yeah, go abroad, yeah, dress up like police. Mm. You know, go abroad, dress up like police and just pull over like, you know, like big computer, fact, you know, like lorries. Um, I'll do politicians. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've done a politician and took so so, so so what was your biggest sentence then? Because obviously you went in for a long time. Okay, so um, now, <laughs> so, okay, I've made a lot of cash within a small amount of time. So when you make cash that quick, you spend it quick. Because a robber never really appreciates the the, the 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 grind that someone else would do. So someone that goes to work appreciates the hard work that they have had to put in to get the cash. Even a drug dealer, because drug dealing is business. Do you know what I'm saying? Obviously, it's bad business. Of course, of course. But, but it's, it's a still business. business. It's still There's a concept. Business. Exactly right. Um, so you know about going to get this person and bagging this up and going over here and making sure that you got this. So you won't splash your cash like that because you know how hard you've had to work for it. But someone like me will just come through. And I'll make that cash in 15, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, and I'll disperse and then I'll be I'll just spend it quickly. Cause I'll I'll be like, yeah, I'll get another lick like that. Do you know what I'm saying? And most of the times I'll my lick, my licks are my robberies have been hella successful because it will be a right hand man that will set you up. He won't be happy with the split. And he knows my success rate's high. You know, certain I'll rob the place 
right, with the uh, person setting it up in there with you, right beside you, we'll send a text in the toilets. Give me the address and I'll come through watching SWAT. They'll sledgehammer your door. SWAT in America do that. Sledgehammer your door, come through. I come through waving a pump action. You know, as soon as you hear, your, your ass falls out. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? And I'm taking the goods. Mm. And I'll end up beating up the guy that set it up as well just to... To, to know, make it look like it's... suspicious. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? So um, that led to your sentence. So, so was, was that part of it then? Yeah, yeah. I got into a habit of um, shooting people during robberies. Okay, so robbery with aggravation. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Any, any murder charges in there? Ah, nah, 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 nah. But do you know what? Alhamdulillah, do you know what? Um, there was two ways for me, um, either dead or serving life. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, That's how you perceived your life at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything I used to do was a life sentence. Mm. You know, I step out straight life. You know, I don't do no meaty crime. You know, if I pop up and I see you, you know, it's not a coincidence. You know, I've got a list of addresses that I'm coming through. Mm. So I had, uh, I used to work with Albanians. I used to set each other up because they used to shot cocaine. Mm. Um, I used to work with Chinese people because they used to grow cannabis. So, you know, Vietnam, they've got the bosses in Vietnam, they'll set up the place to get robbed, so we'll take the factory. Mm. Um, I also used to work with, um, you know, like white boys and, you know, stuff like that. I've, I also used to work with one or two celebrities and stuff mm. like that as well, so they'll set each other up out of spite. Mm. And I'll come through, take a quarter mil cash, take 300 bags cash. So a lot of money I did at that time. Yeah, 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 it's definitely out of spite. Mm. Um, but yeah. Um, so the sentence, how did that come about then? So, because we're, we're time wise. So, to speed it up, um, Obviously, this, this is what I do for a living. I'm, mm. I'm, I mean, I stick people up. If I get drugs, I stick them in the neighbourhood and make the young youth sell the drugs and I collect the money. Um, we've gone to do a yard, right? A, it's meant to be a drug yard. But now, you know, I'm not running through yards no more, right? So I'm just setting them up now. I'm playing the middleman. That's the yard, that's the yard. And I come through, I'm kind of sick like that. Like, I used to come back to crime scenes and just watch the police operate and shit like that. Um, so I come through to robbery and just watch in the background what's happening, right? So anyway, the first robbery that day didn't go accordingly because they've done the wrong door. We're heading to another door. It's a Chinese woman. She had four sons in the house um, and she was a lo- loan shark. So she had like 200k in the house. Mm-hmm. And the person that's dropped her 30 grand in the house, he dropped her a message on my phone, right? And he said, listen, I'm dropping off 30 bags to this yard. Come through. She got four sons. One's in a wheelchair. The others are able-bodied. It doesn't matter who's in the house. I come from securing a scene. Remember, I've come out of jail now, so I've got, I've got size on me. Mm. And I'm mad aggressive with it as well. Mm. But I'm also polite at the same time. Do you know what I'm saying? If violence is necessary, I'll apply it. If not... So anyway, as we're heading there, what I used to do is I used to buy stolen cars and ring them over. Mm. So I'll get, fit, fit, you know, that number plates. I'll go on, like, yeah, um, yeah. ask mid to see if the car's insured. I'll go to a car selling website to see if I can get a copy of the number plate of a car that matches the car that I got that stolen. Mm. So I'll play up the car. I got the guns. I got the addresses. I got the boys. We're coming to your house. So as we're driving around, I didn't even need to be in a car. I could have been my brethren's car because he was the safety car. Um, I just like to make sure that things go accordingly because the first robbery didn't go accordingly. We're driving there. Mm. I remember we ended up at Tower near, near South, 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 South Key. So, we're heading there. Surrey Keys? Surrey, Surrey Key, Keys. It's not Isle of Dogs, it's the South. Oh, sorry, Keezy. Yeah, 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 sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're heading there. There's an X5 that's on me, right? Armed feds. Um, the following, right? The car is plated. I'm thinking, bro, the car's legit. It's insured. But the number plates that I took were from an insured, you know, like a car insu- uh, car showroom. Okay. Yeah, the car wasn't registered to anyone, so the feds want to know who is it. Right, so anyway, they end up following, following. They flash the lights, take chase. So as we take chase, crash the car, jump out to wing, right? One of the guys that I was with, it was his job to take the mash. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Under any circumstances, you take the mash, right? We're near the the, the, the the Thames, you throw that shit. We take chase, we don't know where we're going, couple of East boys. As we jump out the car and it crashes, bruv, tourists are taking pictures. They handed us into the feds, innit? Anyway, the feds nicked us. We're in jail. I went straight to Belmarsh. As I'm in Belmarsh, sitting there facing these charges, I'm thinking it's mine on gun charges. I've been on gun charges before, right? That was my second gun charge. Next thing, feds come to see me. Um, they come to see me. Um, they're asking me about a guy that I shot in his back at, at the house, apparently, supposedly. Um, anyway, um, I, I went no comment. They took me to Plumstead Police Station. Yeah, yeah. I went no comment. 
you know, at the time, I'm one of them guys. Feds come to see me. I want to know what what it's about. So I go to the, um to the to, to the desk. They take me Plumstead. They interview me. You know, I come in. I don't hear nothing back from them. I end up getting bail, right? So when I get bail, I'm out for two weeks. I turn up to police station. They've locked that shit down. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm thinking, bro, because I'm meant to sign on. I'm thinking, bro, what's going on? The whole Fed station shut off. Someone pops up from underneath the desk and I go, hello. Uh, one of my colleagues wants to talk to you, right? So they call me into a room, right? When they call me into this room, there's a woman that wants to talk to me. She's investigating other shootings, right? So I'm not familiar with her. She goes, another colleague of mine's coming to talk to you about saying. Another Fed comes through. I remember him from a shooting that apparently they're saying that, they're saying that I did. Mm. And this woman investigating another two more shootings. Do you know what I'm saying? In-house shootings. So I end up I'm revoking my bell, chucked me back in jail. Mm. Um, for the first crime that I was in jail for, I got 12 years, right, in jail. Just, just sitting in there. The gun charge? Huh? The first gun charge. You know, the, the gun charge. Yeah, it was yeah. like aggravated burglary. Funny enough, I thought aggravated burglary was a minor. Mm, mm, bloody not... burglary, innit? My first aggravated burglary, I got 12 years, mm. right? I thought it's a minor, so I was like, would they give me 12 years? I'm like, wow, what? It's a burglary, though, right? <laughs> no. For aggravation. Yes, yeah, aggravation. Anyway. So that was a 12 year, that first sentence? Yeah, that was 12 years. Now I'm fighting three shooting charges from, mm. from Belmarsh, right? The same way you've entered the house, you've shot a man in the back, you've entered the house, you've shot a man in the neck, um, you've entered the house, you've shot a man in the chest. Allegedly. These are all allegedly, these are all at separate times. So now you can imagine, I'm serving 12 years, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, she's getting left real quick. Two of the cases crumbled real quick. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. One case just stuck. The feds just couldn't let it go. Um, you know, um, so I take it to trial. But I got a little ace up my sleeve. Um, growing up, I had a woman that I used to take care of, right? She got into a car accident. I used to take care of her and she was in my life throughout my, my whole time. You know, she ended up being, when I got out of prison the first time around, I went, she came and got me for, for, for food. Um, and I found out she was a judge. The whole time I had no idea she was a judge. Mm. Um, so, you know, when shit went left for me, I called for her. But never mind the fact that this time around, now that I'm in jail, that's when Islam's come in. Mm. Um, I used to hang on with some Pakistani boys at the time. Even though they were jahil, Right at the time, they, they don't pray, they smoke, they smoke weed and stuff like that. But for me, I'm super jahil. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? So any type of goodness that they're trying to give out, that they got on them, rubs off on me. Mm. So I remember I used to use the same words at them. Do you know what I'm saying? You know, because we're hanging around with each other. You say, yeah, brother, I used to make say, say, wallahi. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now, I remember once they've locked me in a room, right, for misbehaving in prison. This was in Brixton. And Dr. Zaki and Nike's books, they're the infamous... Uh, stories um the Quran compatible incompatible that little green book yeah, yeah. every inmate's come across that book yeah, yeah. and I was always into science so I opened it because I got no TV you have to read it yeah so when I opened it I read it and I was always a bit into science but it took me a year to take my shahada because I knew if I go into this thing there's no going back and like I said I don't do in between I do on or off Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, take my shahada. I can't smoke. I can't drink. I can't see girls. <sighs> it's kind of a sticky one still. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But a year later, reading into this, it's huck. Do you know, it's non. You know what I'm saying? It's not. It's non-negotiable. It's huck, bro. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? You're only fooling yourself, especially if your heart's open mm-hmm. and you see it and you choose to deny it. You know, and, and this I used, was in Brixton. Yeah, this was in Brixton. No, nah, but I took I took my shahada a year later. So I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I took I took it in Ch- uh, Thameside. Okay. What was yeah. your age then? Twenty two, twenty. Yeah, then my age was like twenty. Yeah, twenty one, twenty two. Twenty one, twenty two. Yeah, and I started learning my surahs and you know I started getting Quran class. You know, tajweed recitation of Quran. Mm. Do you know, I've never looked back. You know. So so when you done that though, was you conscious of leaving the roadside? Um, so, so you say just, at the I'm beginning, gonna, I'm gonna become Muslim, but I'm gonna leave the roads with. At this. the beginning, you try to do both. Mm. That's how it goes. At the beginning, you're like, because it's a transition, of course. And you know what? Believe it or not, in prison, I've seen brothers that become Muslim overnight, and they go extreme. Mm. But you can tell, bro, the speed that you're running at, you're gonna stumble and fall, and you're gonna end up falling off the whole thing. Mm. Islamic, uh, Islam is a way of life. You take your time with it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't rush it. Next time you see a dude, the brother's got a lahi eye, he's got the whole, the head wrap, he's moving mad pies, he's got a miswack and that. Do you know what I'm saying? And this dude, this this brother, you know, mashallah, yeah. He's trying. He's, he's trying, but he's doing too much. Of course. 
take time with it because you, you know uh, inshallah Allah will grant you a long life mm. find a way to bring make it into a you know, a, a journey your journey don't try and literally finish the the race <laughs> <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? Within a couple of days. Yeah, do you understand what I'm saying? So for me, alhamdulillah, you know, it's I've never looked back. I, yeah, and to be to be fun with you and to be honest with you, if you were to ask me what I do now for work, you won't even believe what I do for work, bro. Mm -hmm. From what I see, you do the gym thing. I'm a teacher, bro. Okay, so on the side you're teaching. I, I teach in a uni. Okay, much. Can you imagine that? So I'm a lecture, a lecture in the uni, bro. Okay. What kind of topics is it? Um, of training people. Okay. You know, the body and the anatomy. I'm the assessor and tutor in the uni and I do it for a sports academy and stuff like that. So how my life's played out, you know. Yeah, from listening to that part of your life exactly. to saying you're teaching now. That's yeah, it. yeah, it's crazy, man. How long were you, how long was the sentence inside? I was in prison for 10 years. Straight, Two, straight ten. So you came out when you were about thirty. I people. came out during. I came out during uh, lockdown. coronavirus lockdown. Subhanallah. Yeah, coronavirus lockdown. That was very tough for me though, because I got to find a job, but the gyms are shut, and you know, um, I wanted to get married, but I ain't got a job. Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, how am I gonna, you know, how am I gonna fund my marriage? You know, how am I gonna support my wife if I haven't got funds? Mm. So all these things come into play. But alhamdulillah, I'm married now. No, mm, um, inshallah. You know, um, I work. How did you get into obviously just as in, in a short form? How did you get into teaching? Uh, so in prison, while I was in prison, I used the time while I was in prison to study. Inshallah. You know, in prison, Allah holds you there and says, "Take a good look at yourself." You know, mm. ten long years. It's we're not talking eighteen months now. Mm. We're talking ten years. You know. Uh, bro, bro, I can honestly tell you, since I become Muslim, I haven't missed my salah, bro. Sure you know, you get certain people that are like, oh, no, not today, not today. That doesn't exist with me. Like I've said, I'm on or off. I don't miss salah under no circumstance. So my whole life structured around salah. Mm. Alhamdulillah, for me, it's, it's changed my life. And that's why I'm not doing the stuff that I used to do back then. And it was very easy to make money back then. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, I quit the I quit smoking weed. I quit drinking. I quit um, robbing people. I quit shooting people. You know, um, I got a legit job, something I never thought I'd do in my life. Mm -hmm. I got married, something I never thought I'd do in my life. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. like it's you know, if you take if you take stuff serious and you look into it, you, you got to know who you are, man. People past, are moving pa past friends, associates. Are you in touch with them? The yeah, they've seen me. They, they, they've seen me, but the funny thing is, I was the bad influence, so there wasn't a bad influence towards me. Mm -hmm. You know, you get them guys that always come around like, yo, I got a robbery there. Do you know what I'm saying? And you can kind of see that these guys are thinking, oh, gosh. You know, but mm. I was always the bad influence. But so now, now that you've left, mm. it's not like you're getting pulled in. You was the one doing the pulling. Yeah, now yeah, now they see me, they're like, rah, this guy's married. This guy's on, he's on this Muslim thing. <laughs> that's what they're saying. Yeah, that's what they're saying. Yeah, he's on this Muslim thing. That one thing positive, you know, so one other thing in South London was, uh, some brothers came to the dean, and the thing was, and they're praying, and they, you know, they're wearing thobes maybe, but at the same time they're doing some stuff which is against dean, right. or, you know, whether it be robbing or, or selling drugs and so on, and that gave a very bad image yeah, yeah. because until then people knew, you know what, you if you're a Muslim you don't do those things. Yeah. When that started it created a very bad impression of Islam. Yeah. So it's good in a sense with yourself, you know what, okay, you know what, I'm either on it or off it. I've come to the deen, yeah, yeah, yeah. even though it doesn't mean you got, no a person's going to be perfect, yeah. but there's got to be certain boundaries that a Muslim can't, you, yeah. know, yeah. you know, you know, surpass. The other thing I wanted to ask you, Adam, you know, so in Europe, they say there's a big kind of like rift between North and South in Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, some of the rappers are involved there yeah. and it's kind of like ongoing and it's kind of like, you know, very deep. Right. You know, what would be your, you're, you're from that borough, what would be your kind of responsibility towards that, you know, towards those youngsters? And I hear some of them are Muslims, you know. What, Do you know what, to be honest with you, the the olders for these, you see these, the rappers and stuff like that, when I was, obviously no offence or nothing, but when I was out there doing what I was doing, these, these, these were kept in their houses. Do you know what I'm saying? So some of these guys that popped out of the, the woodwork and doing whatever they're doing, you know, I don't know these guys. So for me now, when they say my name, um, no one knows what I look like up until probably now. They'll be like, oh my gosh, there's that guy. You know what I'm saying? They used to do this and that in the area. But other than that, you know, I haven't I haven't really got a connection to the area like that. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? So well, I, I ask I this, because like what you mentioned, youth clubs, okay, did they really do anything? But I think people like you, there's a role that you need to play. Right. 
yeah, to kind of like advise youngsters towards the changes that you have made. Because the last thing we want is like, a, you know, the message I spoke about, he said, look, a time will come, people will kill yeah. and be why. killed and just don't know what's happening. Yeah, 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 like yeah. you mentioned, you know, okay, it might be not the person, but it's associates friends. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. friends. Yeah. And like what the Latif said, these are innocents. People nowadays run into houses and they're kind of like shooting at mothers and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's messy. Yeah, yeah, you know. Level poor. But what would be yeah. your, because I see a role and a responsibility on your shoulders that Alhamdulillah, you're teaching, you're lecturing, mm-hmm. but don't forget the hood. Don't forget yeah. Your ends, don't forget the youngsters. You know, it's funny enough, let me tell you something. I got into a thing called, um, uh, it's, it was actually here in Lewisham, a thing called um, that Divert. Have you heard of Divert? So kids that get nicked, that end up in police stations. Mm. Yeah, I've done a bit of mentoring with these um, people in Divert. I end, actually end up in Lewisham police station where I, I bumped it. You know, you bust the flaps yeah, and you yeah. say to the youth, that, yo, you know, um, oh, you've been nicked, innit? Oh, man, it's a messy situation. Do you want to get into work or do you want to get into education? So we provide, mm. we used to provide a, a way out of whatever situation they're in. So if they got no opportunity of getting back into education or getting into work, whether it's carpentry or building, um, that was a thing that I used to do. It was an option that I used to do. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. So I've done a bit of that, but, you know, the, these are government-funded um projects mm. do you know what i'm saying and sometimes they play play around with pay and stuff like that but that was something that i was actually passionate about trying to get you to a police state ple- you know okay. police trouble and police mm-hmm. police stations and stuff like that so i've done a bit of work there actually there in Lucian police station mm-hmm. about four or five months ago mm-hmm. still so, you know many of the most profound sahaba yeah. you had a major impact yeah, you know, you know, on, on on the world. I mean, that was a generation that just impacted the whole world. Before Islam, they were also leaders, but maybe not in the right way. Right, right, right. So you see Omar, you see Hamza, you see Khal bin Walid, yeah. but they took leadership skills that Allah had blessed them with yeah. towards the Deen yeah. and benefiting now the Dean side. Right, right. Yeah. And this is what, inshallah, you know, you're coming from a leadership perspective. Right, right. Yeah. Using those skills now to bring about, no, inshallah. 100%. 100%. Yeah, I think inshallah. there's room for that. I think you're already doing some bits on Instagram, yeah. even with your muscle and all of that stuff. The, the reminders that you give within that. Yeah. I think that's a starting point. And inshallah, this is also a starting point, inshallah. talking about how you've transformed from that kind of character to, mashallah, you know, this clean character that you have right now. I would have never known that. I do not tell me all those other stories. I just saw clean talking, yeah. theosaurus, uh, English <laughs> dictionary talking, brother, do you know what I mean? So for the youngsters watching it, it's already a start that you're a person who's come from that and to inshallah yeah, yeah, show yeah. them more things. I think there's more to come inshallah and from Inshallah, because there's always change. It's never too late to change, you mm. know what I mean? Mm. Um, just don't cave into the pressures, you know, that, you know that, that's that been applied. There's always a way out. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, this is your life, you know, and prison is not a place you want to end up in, man. Mm. 100%. I've been 16 joints throughout my sentence mm. and I've met guys. And do you know what? Helped me a lot as well. Guy in a, guy in a prison helped, made me realize that I'm not the baddest. Mm. And I went in there with an attitude like, yeah, man. So, this, There's this, always someone willing to do the, more. Exactly. The guys in there, have, they ain't got a second chance. Mm. You know and they think about suicide all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, I think about killing myself all the time. And you look at them and you think, oh my God, Alhamdulillah, I could have been in Nash. Mm. Do, you, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? Of course. So, three you know, years, four yeah, years. Three years to try to wrap your mind around that. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? So people got to think, you can't just be acting on impulse and stuff like that. Just like I've just told you my story, you can definitely turn that around. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? And for me, the Dean's been the a strong point for me. Like it's, mm. it's, it's, it's who I am. And before I would have died for stupidity, do you know what I'm saying? You got to have something solid. You know what I'm saying? Now I can honestly say, inshallah, you know, on a part, if I pass away, I pass away a Muslim. Whereas before when I was in a coma, I could have died. Non-Muslim, bro. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? For Allah, had ruled. Sides. Yeah, so if I pre, I'm thinking about rock because I think about it all the time. I was in that coma. You know, if Allah had ruled, yeah, oh and God. he says, yo, bring him. Do you understand what I'm saying? That could have been me. Mm. Like, non-Muslim. I've never done a sujood. I've never done a rakat. Nothing. Mm. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? To this now. Do you know what I'm saying? So, oh, And what would you have died for? Exactly. You die for exactly. a street name uh, uh, named exactly. after George the Second. Like, who cares? Not like? even that. I would have died with a bit of weed in my pocket. Mm. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? What was you doing the time that you drugs. died? I went to go and pick up drugs. <laughs> do you know what mm. I'm saying? Mm. So if when you sit down, you got to analyze your life and see where do you want to end up. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you don't own any roads. 
Hey, you know, you people that fight for their postcode and stuff. You don't own no road. You don't even own, your parents don't even own the house. That, 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 that council that house. Do you, know, do you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a sad situation. So, mm-hmm. you know, inshallah, you know, any projects that I can do to try and, you know. So what do you do? Like, sorry, just to finish off, you do gym? So I, well? No, I'm a PT. Okay. Um, I'm a lecturer, uh, an assessor, you know, in a, in a university Mashallah. near here. Mashallah. Right. Uh, and uh, do you lecturing and, and tutoring in a, in a sports academy okay. in, in East in East London, Canary Wharf? Okay. And I do some online. Um, Where can people do. find you that? Because I know you do the gym thing as well. So is that like, something you do on your spare time as a business as well? Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to, obviously, I'm new to Instagram and stuff like that. My cool. last account got hacked, so I've okay. had to rebuild again. Now we'll put it underneath, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. Yeah. People can see by your physique that. I try. You know, I try people can copy you, inshallah. Yeah, and Imam, Imam can be your first uh, client. Allah my barik. See, Allah my barik. The way he's looking at you, maybe he's jealous. Like, See, Allah my barik. <laughs> and you know what? I tell you what, Islamically. I want it in a legit way. Islamically, health is important. 100%. Brothers, like, you need to uphold your health, especially as a Muslim, man. Mm. You've got to take pride, you know, in, in your, your strength. appearance. And, you know, you want people to say, right, look at that brother, mashallah, as a. He takes care of himself because mm-hmm. that shows discipline. Well, yeah, what it shows is when you see someone of size or fitness, yeah. what it tells you is a person of discipline, yeah, yeah. lack of laziness, yeah, yeah. vision, you know, consistency. Because yeah. gym is all about consistency. Yeah. It's not about a one-off thing. It shows consistency. Yeah. And of course, there's other things that come with it, but there's more positives than there are negatives exactly. with fitness at least. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I think we've gone way past uh, what we usually do, which is an hour, but you've been very insightful with your yeah. with your past. You know, we hope that Allah blesses you with any um, endeavors that you have at the moment and anything you do in the future. Um, Jazakumullah khair for coming through. And everyone who's been viewing, Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.